brioche stitch in the round with two colors. Um, I'm going to show you how I cast on first, which is really only one of many ways you could cast on. Um, I'm just choosing to use this one because of the edge it gives me and I happen to like the effect. Um, for this particular application, which is I need a stable but very wide stretchy edge um, that will take more crocheting well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a crochet hook. Uh, this is kind of a largish crochet hook. This is a an H or 5 millimeter. This is a actually a DK weight. I'm going to use a DK weight yarn and a worsted weight yarn together. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be fine. This is, I think this is a 6. Um, this needle is a little bit small for the yarn normally, well for a worsted weight yarn. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that helps the brioche stitch have more structure, more structural integrity, since brioche stitch is very stretchy. So I made a slip knot. Um, what I'm going to do is a variation on the crochet cast on, which is also handy for a provisional cast on, but anyway. So I'm going to chain over my knitting needle. Okay and instead of moving the yarn behind the needle and chaining again, I'm going to chain an extra one. That gives me a little extra space between the two stitches, but it gives me a nice stable edge. Do it again. That's a second stitch on the needle. Chain one again to give it a little extra space. And I'm just going to do that over and over and over again chain one over the needle, <laughs> try not to lose the yarn, chain one. Okay, so I've got 60, I need 64, so I'll just show the last few. The yarn's in the back, yarn over, pull it through, that's 61, chain one, Then move the yarn to the back, yarn over to chain one, 62, extra chain, and 63. Now, got this loop on the thing. That's 64. Just put it on the hook, or put it off the hook onto the needle. That's 64. Okay, you can get rid of the crochet hook. I won't need it for a while. And take all those stitches, make sure they're nice and neat and not twisted around the needle because that wouldn't be good. 64 stitches. I'm going to use the tail to remind myself where it is. Now I've written it down, I don't know if you can see it, but my setup row is knit one, yarn over, slip one in main color. So joining in the round, I'm knitting one, yarn over, and then slip the next stitch. Because I'm holding the yarn in my left hand, I can do this all handily in one movement. So I can do knit one, yarn over, slip stitch. Knit one, yarn over, slip stitch. Knit one, the yarn comes in front, and I slip a stitch and make the yarn over at the same time. Knit one, yarn over, slip a stitch. And if you look, what I have is a neat little knit one with this kind of yarn over slip stitch combination in between my knit stitches. That's important. These yarn over and slip stitches get worked as a single unit. Okay, so yarn over, slip, knit one, yarn over and slip, and knit one, and I'm back at that last stitch, and I've just knit one, so this should be a yarn over and a slip one. But there is nothing to hold that yarn over in place. 
That's okay. You just drop it, leave it there. Remember it's a yarn over. You're going to need that yarn over later. Time to add in your contrast color. I'm using purple. Um, hold it in back. If you need to, I like to do this. I like to take it and I like to slip knot my ends together just so they don't wander around too much, um, mess with my tension or whatever. Just and so I don't lose them. Um, anyway, I just slip knot them loosely together just so I can keep track of them. 